in the first video, we explained the need for OS query. That, uh, some attackers can modify files uh, in uh, Linux systems and bypass the normal utilities that produce the logs that are sent to Qreader. Now, remember OS query is good for not just Linux, but also Mac OS and Windows and FreeBSD, etc. Now, let's actually go ahead and install in this system OS Query. So let's go to the site and in, if we go all the way to the top on the site, we'll see a section for downloads. Right? And, and you can install OS Query the standard way with packages and the different OS, OS operating system, but there is an alternative option, which is that's the one that we are going to use for Debian Linux. What we're going to do is that we're going to start copying each and each and every one of these lines and pasting it in our virtual machine. The first command, we do this as quick as we can to keep the video short. These commands go down very, very quickly. Paste the next one. That's, that's it. Let's go back while that one is working and grab the next one. Copy go here let's wait for that one to finish let's paste the next one let's grab I believe it is the last one no there's uh, two more now sudo apt get update to make sure the machine is up to date and then we'll install we'll install OS query let's paste that one Let's grab the last one. We have not configured OS Query. We will do that later, but we have uh, installed it. So if we type OS Query I as an interactive, we enter into the OS Query shell, and we can do like any SQL, select all asterisk from, and let's play with the table user where we had all those users defined. If we do that, users, right? If we do that, we get all this data. Notice that in the end, we have Mutas that we added manually, and we have Mike from before, right? If we don't want all this data, but only what we want, and we can look at the schema as we were looking at it before. We only want, for example, UID and uh, username. So we do, instead of asterisk, UID, comma, username from users, and we only get those two commands, right? To exit the query, we do control D. And as you see, this is a way of querying the multiple table, the 236 for now. And this is a, an, this a, an, an open software that keeps on growing with more capabilities. So we can query whatever we want about those operating systems. Now, OS Query has the capability of, when it queries the table the first time, you get the whole gets the whole thing. But when, you, when it keeps on querying those tables, it will be is capable of sending just a delta. This line has been added. This line has been deleted, and you know uh, stuff like that. So you don't you don't get all that information being consumed all the time. Because in the end, we want to send this to Curator later. More on that in in the subsequent videos. But how do we configure OS Query? So we configure OS Query by creating a file, and here are my notes from Mutas, 
we're going to create a, a file name called osquery.conf and we're going to put this. And what we are basically doing in here is that, in, you know, the identifier is this particular machine using uh, UTC time. And we're only going to be doing the query from the users every 10 seconds. And these are the decorator to limit the, the information that we get. So very simple just to, to begin with this, right? So let's actually create the file. Actually, the name is not important. We're going to do insert. We're going to paste that JSON file that we got. We save it. And now, in order to run the configuration or to load the configuration, all we need to do is run this command. So we paste that. and that configuration has been loaded. So you probably already realized my mistake. I did not create that file under root. So I'm, let me move that file there. Let me rerun that configuration. And we put the option verbose to get a lot of details. Uh, those error registering subscriber, they're not important at, the, at this particular point. Let's wait until this finishes. So actually it is running every 10 seconds, retrieving the, the actual data. So we don't need to stay here. We can actually do Control-C to stop that. Okay. So we have a system that queries the first time, gets the entire table, the next time gets the delta. So we are able to in this limited installation, we are monitoring the user's table in this uh, Linux system. So now, where is this, the results of those queries being placed? Well, if we go to, actually, if we go to var log, should be an OS query subdirectory, and in here, OS query d dot results. Actually, instead of do this, let's actually do a a cut of the of the result. And we see that you know we can do less or more tail etc. But we see in here the data for mutas. You know, the data for Mike, it's also there. So we, we got now all this information in a file in the machine now, okay? And like any modern type of logs, these are in nice JSON format that, it's, as you know, you can parse very easily in Curator without to do, having to do any regex or anything like that, right? Now, our next task will be, okay, how do we send this file to Curator? And then how we get Curator to process, parse the, the content of that file. And um, we're going to keep this video up to this point. It's, it's, I don't like to do videos more than uh, 10 minutes or so. And then in the next video, we're going to be using a, an utility that is going to be sending files into Curator and that uh, video can be a standalone one because there might be other reasons why you want to use that type of technique. We show how we do that with Win Collect in Windows in a, in a video. Now let's actually use uh, Syslog NG to do the same from Linux and other systems.